And finally they were like, well, we don't know why it's not updating on our end, but here's the PDF. So I'm like, okay, this is it. It's really happening. And so um, I opened it up and I saw my name and I screamed and I cried and I hit the ground and I, I, oh, uncontrollable. I scared the bejesus out of my daughter. She went and hid behind my husband because uncontrollable crying for, you know, no explained reason is a little scary for a five-year-old. But we, we called her over and I told her that I had passed my test that I had been studying so hard for. And she just gave me the biggest hug in the whole wide world and asked if we could have celebratory pizza. Well, hey everybody, welcome back to Hanging Out with Successful Bar Exam Takers. We have a great, great, great story today. I know I say that a lot, but I is a call that I really am looking forward to sharing with all of you because it's not only with one of my favorite students, but her story is nothing short of incredible. I want to introduce you to Brianna Belusic. Uh, and I'm stumbling over that, Brianna, because I knew you as Brianna Shaw for so long. And then you went ahead and changed names. Anyway, welcome to the show. And why don't you tell us what your accomplishment is? I passed the uniform bar exam. Oh gosh, let's see. After four times of taking a bar exam, I took the Texas bar three times failed, took the uniform bar exam in New Mexico and passed it with flying colors. And I am just over the moon excited right yeah. now. Yeah. Congratulations. And not just flying colors. Will you share with us what your score was? I got a 285. I mean, if you don't know what that means, folks, that means that Brianna could be waived into 32 jurisdictions in the United States. That is five points higher than the highest required passing score on the uniform bar exam. And wow, what an accomplishment. Tell me how you're feeling right now. I, I'm, I'm on cloud nine. I am on top of the mountains. When I saw the score, I was just completely stunned and blown away that I actually did it. My goal was to pass. My actual goal was 276. I really wanted to get into Colorado. You guys, you can do anything, anything you want in this world. You can do it. That's how I feel right now. Yeah. And we're going to dig into your story, your backstory a little bit, but that's absolutely incredible because when I first started working with you, you were taking the Texas bar exam and that goes back, I think to 2013 or 2014, right? So it's been a while. That's, that's right. 2013. Um, the first time I took it, I was actually, so I graduated December, 2012, took it February, 2013. And I was actually getting married in July, 2013 of that year. And honestly, I, I love my husband. I love the fact that I got married and I love the fact that I'm now ballistic. I think that was part of the reason that, you know, I, I, I maybe put too much emphasis on planning my wedding, <laughs> studying for the bar. Maybe. But, uh, but you, yeah, but you put a lot of effort. Yeah, but you put a lot of effort in. And I know that it was really disappointing to you when you took the Texas bar and you were coming up short. And then you you stepped away for a while you had a child. And your daughter is how old now? My daughter is five. And I also have a son who will be two in May. Okay, so two little ones. And yes. so then what made you decide after being away for a while, you tried Texas three times, got a, a family, there's a lot going on in your life. Why come back to the, take the bar now? What was your thought process? Well, the initial driving factor was that I wanted a better life for my family. I, I had graduated from law school. I was going down this path. I was in the legal industry working um, kind of in oil and gas as a landman. And I had always told myself that that was enough. I didn't pass the bar exam so many times. I was going to be a full-time working mother and it was it was going to be okay and I started having this feeling inside that I just I, I wanted more I wanted more for my family I wanted more for myself I felt like I was made for more and there is a book came across it was it's called Girl Wash Your Face by Rachel Hollis she changed my life I listened to her book and I realized that I had bigger dreams and it was time for me to go out and do it. And I know that with a one-year-old and a four-year-old at the time, I mean, seriously, there couldn't be worse timing, but there was never going to be the right time. And that was one thing that, that she kind of just spoke to me. So, I mean, and, and then it was kind of like, okay, well, how do I do this? So I started researching um, how to accomplish your dreams with 
everything else going on in life. And one of the books, the other books that I came across are the people that kind of really spoke to me was Mel Robbins. And it's um, the five second rule. And that's kind of how I found my, my motivation of the just do it. So if you're, if you're sitting down and you're trying to figure out how do I do this and you need a little extra oomph, a little extra push, listen to them. They will change your world, put you in a different mindset and teach you the initial skills you need in order to go into Celebration Bar Review and utilize every single one of the tools that Jackson has to offer. The people listening to this, I mean, outside of that, Celebration Bar Review has every single tool you need to succeed. You have to utilize it. And, you know, I, I think it's great that you talk about those two particular books because they're favorites of mine. And, you know, I'm, I'm a fanboy for Rachel Hollis. I think that what she's done is, has moved so many women off the sidelines and, and into the game again. And so when, when you resurfaced, you contacted me and I was like, whoa, okay. So here you are, you're, you're back. And I was pleasantly surprised that you wanted to take the bar, but we started our conversations talking about you resitting for the Texas exam, right? And then we, we kind of said, well, maybe there's a different strategy here. And the strategy for those who aren't, aren't aware, I want to share it a little bit with folks, is that Texas is switching to the uniform bar exam in February, 2021. And they have announced that they will accept UBE scores within a 24 month period of that time. And so part of the, the thought process here was to have you sit for a UBE jurisdiction, sort of get your feet wet, go back in, take a shot at it, and hopefully get a high enough score that not only could you get admitted in the UBE jurisdictions that you sat in, and, and I'll explain in a minute why we picked New Mexico, but that you would then have a high enough score for Texas when it flipped over to the UBE. And boy, did you do that in spades. So yeah, let's talk a little bit about why New Mexico, because I think that would surprise some folks. You don't live in New Mexico, you live in Texas, right? So what was your thought process there? Well, when we initially started down this path, we were discussing the right atmosphere. And then we also talked about the score. The score was requ- the, the score required in New Mexico is one of the lower of the UBE. Also chose New Mexico because I'm in oil and gas and it's an oil and gas state. So even if I couldn't transfer that score to Texas, I would still be fine. Um, I'd still be able to practice law. It didn't, it didn't matter which state I was uh, uh, licensed in. And I think that this is a great case study because it wasn't just, you know, tossing a, a dart at the board and saying, what well, state, you actually were pretty careful about thinking about this. And we talked about New Mexico because it's a smaller jurisdiction. The graders stay very true to the drafter point sheets. In other words, they don't do weird things with what the national conference gives them. They analyze and grade the performance tests and the essays pretty true to form. They're also a jurisdiction you can work with pretty easily. They're, they're pretty responsive and they're, they're just not super formal. Is that a fair statement? Yeah. They, they have several platforms you can reach out and ask questions. And I actually sat in, there's a whole Q&A that they do before the exam. Any questions? And they are so forward and, and, and just give you the answer as is. And I mean, they have a Facebook page. They've got the Slack uh, Slack by the, and they've got email and they respond within their emails. I mean, probably within at least five minutes of every single email. Yeah. Sends, yeah. Asking questions. Yeah. Um, I, I, they're, they're one of my favorites. I mean, frankly, uh, you know, I think about states like Texas and Florida and California and they're, that, that's the opposite of New Mexico. But the other part of it was that, that there was a, a nexus to sitting in New Mexico for you. And so it made sense to go ahead and do that. Now, what was interesting, so, so you made the decision, you signed up for the UBE for February 2020 in New Mexico, and you started your studies, and you selected our personal coaching plan, which meant that you and I did 15 coaching calls, and we're going to get into those in a few minutes. You know, it, it was an interesting process because I watched you go from at first being kind of not sure about what you were doing and fighting some demons and battles, right? And then starting to gain your confidence and then really being like ready and there and and 
being able to do it. But maybe you could talk about that that progression or growth for you as you started into that process again. Yeah, for sure. So when I first started this whole process and, and working with you, I think we probably spoke about every two weeks, maybe once a month in the very beginning. But I knew that in order for me to be successful, I, I was dealing with an enormous amount of anxiety. I mean, you fail this test three times, you you're scared. And I was also dealing with some residual anxiety from after I had my son, I had postpartum thyroiditis and all of that was kind of, you know, inside. So I was fighting all of that. And I knew that the only way that I was going to be able to be successful was to set myself up for success. I made the decision to take it in probably about April. I think I spoke with you at the end of April, having an initial conference in May. I was kind of like, okay, this is possible. I can do this. I've just got to figure out, I've got to set a schedule. I think I signed up at the end of May. I started studying in June. And starting in June, I literally took your syllabus and knew that I wanted to be done with my substantive review by the end of December. That was my personal goal. And so I, I literally took your syllabus and broke it down and said, here's, here's my goal for this. Here's my goal for this week by week by week. And while I didn't always hit that, I reset every single week and, and regrouped, and I also made myself a priority. I woke up every single morning at 5 a.m. During the summer, I would run in the morning, and then I would work from 8 to 5, and then I had, normal, I had a normal life because I was sacrificing something in the morning. I sacrificed a little bit of sleep throughout this process, but like we talked about, it was my tiger time. <laughs> it was I had to have because with two young children they don't understand mommy's studying mommy's doing this mommy has to do that so I had to carve out two hours that was me my time whatever I did with that whether it was you know having a, a mental reset whether it was studying whether it was running whether it was you know meal planning for the week I had to I set aside those two hours to do everything after the summer when um, things were kind of flexible, once I think August hit or so is when I started getting really, really into, I studied from five to seven, got my kids up, got my kids ready for school. I worked from eight to five and then I had a normal evening with my kids. I tried to take a day off. I tried to take Saturdays off and I studied on uh, Sundays. Didn't always happen because life, life is going to happen. It is going to get in the way. And you just, if you, what I, I mean, the way I handled it was I just kind of, I, I reset, I regrouped on Sunday every single day. How can I do better? How can I do this? How can I make sure that this schedule is going to work? It was being flexible with life, but also making sure that that was my schedule every week. Yeah. We, we talked on a regular basis and, yes. you know, one of the interesting things, uh, this was fascinating to me, you were working out, you were running, and you were feeling better. I mean, you were just feeling better from when we started to, to the end. It really made a difference for you, didn't it? A hundred percent. Completely. Making sure you drank enough water made a difference. I mean, your mental health, the fact that you know, your physical and mental health is so important, and I just felt better um, to the point where by the time I hit December, my anxiety issues were gone. Just putting myself on that schedule and taking care of myself, it changed my life. I mean, who would have thought a decision to take this high anxiety, high pressure test would change my life to the degree that it has? And I feel like I owe a lot of that success to all of the resources that you have. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. And we're going to talk about some of those. I, I think one of the interesting things about your journey, Brianna, was that you went from being very anxious and insecure about the process to being kind of confident and then more confident. And then right before the bar exam, you were an unstoppable force. And I recall that in our, our final couple of conversations, you were like, yep, I got it. I know what I'm doing. I'm ready. I'm going to make it happen. And it was, it was really remarkable to watch that happen. And, you know, so the, the score was no surprise to me, but I, I think that just seeing you go from, I don't know if I can do this and having all of that insecurity about the previous exams to recognizing within yourself that you had done the work and that you were ready. It must've been a, an amazingly different feeling walking into the bar exam in February this year. Oh yeah. I felt going into the bar I knew I was ready. I knew I had everything. I had had everything in me to be able to pass it. 
And I'll tell you what, it's really funny. So during, cause I was in New Mexico for a week away from my family and I didn't want to talk to anybody. So I made this playlist <laughs> that I, I pretty much had on repeat when I wasn't in the exam. And I just listened to it over and over and over again. And it was full of songs that just pumped me up. So by the time I was walking into that exam every day and walking out and before I went to bed or before anything, it's just, I felt empowered. And I, I had never felt that before any exam yeah. ever. And you were empowered. And that's, that's amazing and incredible. Let's talk about a couple of the tools that, that we did incorporate. One was photo reading. The other were the paraliminal recordings. Can you talk a little bit about photo reading? Photo reading is amazing. It's, it's whatever, I mean, what some of the people say is it, you don't know why it works or how it works, but it works. I did not traditionally read a single outline and, and I got a 285. And it's phenomenal. I photo read probably every outline at least 50 times. Um, every night before I went to bed, I picked one outline, photo read it. And then two weeks before the exam, I photo read the entire books, all of them, before I went to bed every single night. And then, yeah, it's it's a phenomenal resource. I will definitely take it into, into the future with me. Yeah, it's, a, it's an amazing thing. And people say to me, well, does anybody actually use photo reading? Yes. <laughs> does it work? Yes. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. So you would recommend bar takers use photo reading? Absolutely. Absolutely. You waste so much time trying to read every single word of those outlines and it's so much material. It will stick with you. You will know it. One day you will just wake up one morning and it's just, it, it's there. You know the answer. And it's, it's because it's, it's the connection. It's because of photo reading. Yeah. Well, let's talk about paraliminals. These are the audio recordings that uh, you listen. It's two soundtracks, one in each ear, different soundtracks. And they're a series of uh, recordings that were made that we selected for bar takers to deal with particular things going on in their lives. And you use those as well, right? Absolutely. Because of my anxiety, I had a lot of trouble sleeping at the beginning with a lot of this stuff. So the Sleep Deeply Wake Refreshed was a daily for me. I still listen to it. The Anxiety Free, I probably listen to daily. I went back and forth kind of between that and then the Letting It Go. And I think that when I, I wasn't sure what I wanted to listen to that day, I went with what was recommended. <laughs> Every day I did something and I think that it helped me it gave me peace. Yeah, the paraliminals take about 20 minutes to listen to. And so you were pretty consistent in using them at different times. And But certainly things like uh, sleep uh, deeply, wake refreshed, or letting go, uh, those were daily kinds of occurrences for you. And again, I could see the development. I could see that they were making a difference for you. And you would remark about it and say, I can't, how's that working? <laughs> Why is that working for me? But it, it clearly was, was making a difference. So... When we were doing our conferences, which were writing conferences, I get a lot of questions from people who want to know what those conferences are like. And of course, I, ha I have my perspective, but I'd love to have you share what that process was like for you to, to submit work and talk to me about it. So it's definitely nerve wracking. I'm not going to lie. I think I got nervous before every single phone call we had. And, and it's, I mean, somebody's judging you. You're turning in your stuff, but it's just like, for me, it was just like, I'm turning in something for the bar exam. I, it took me a while to get really comfortable in my writing. I knew that the FLA format was workable and doable and it was the right thing because I got to the point where I, I would, well, I was starting to, well, and this is why it works, but I was starting to use the facts to come up with the law which is what you recommend. The more I adhered to the FLA format, the better my writing got. And every single time we talked, you would pinpoint something I was missing. One of my paragraphs was longer than two to three sentences. One of my paragraphs needed to always be four sentences. Or so let's say my fact paragraph, two to three. And then, and then the next time I'd turn something in, then you would pinpoint the fact that my law needed to be four. So it got better every single time. And then before I knew it, my analysis paragraph pretty much went from two to three sentences to being almost five or six, just because of our conferences and you kind of walking me through 
the, the best way to do it. And what I loved for me, what was so great was the fact that you went through and you made me a better writer little by little in the way that you coached my writing, which I thought was phenomenal. By the, I mean, like you said, by the time I went in, I was so confident in my writing. I wasn't even writing essays anymore the last month. I was just reading for comprehension. I was reviewing essays from the, uh, the prior, the prior model answers and stuff like that. It yeah. was, and, I loved working with you on that. Well, good. And your, your written score was a, a 149.5, right? Yes. <laughs> just like, so it's not like you just, you know, just barely inched over the top. So that, that's blown it away. That's, that's a lot of fives and sixes actually. And the performance tests, people often struggle with those. What was that process like for you? It was when me and you first started going down the performance test, it was bad. And I got to the point where I did one, I did two, I turned it in. I was like, oh, I feel really good about this. And you were like, yeah, that's not so great. And um, I really felt defeated. I did a couple more on my eye. I did one or two more and I think I sent them to you. And we talked through them. You were like, you can do this. You just need to use these specific tools. And I did it on the test. And Jackson, I am pretty confident that both of those MPTs are part of the reason that score is so high. I was so confident after those MPTs. Like, I, I was done. I read them. I perfected them. And I felt so good. Yeah, it, I don't doubt it. Your PTs at the end were spot on. And I mean, it was, it was impressive. So I think you'd mastered that. I think you'd begun to understand how to use your time and how to write. And then as it all sort of came together, it was, it was good. Well, so you, you get to New Mexico, you're going into the exam. It's got to feel a lot different than sitting for the Texas bar. The size is different. The, the, the preparation has been different. Talk a little bit about that. What was that, what was that feeling that you had? You got your playlist, so you're pumped up, but what is it like? I, I was so focused. I loved the fact that it was a smaller atmosphere. Some of the, the test administrators actually have quite a bit of a sense of humor. So it was interesting going in and sitting down um, at my table. I ended up having the whole table to myself because there was a lot of absentees. So I actually had the whole table to myself and I was pumped. I was ready to go. And I was just so laser focused. I can't even, I can't even really describe it. It was just, I, I knew I had to go in there and I had a job to do and I just did it. What about on the multi-state day? How long did it take you to finish 100 questions? I finished both the morning and the afternoon session with 20 minutes to spare. Is a huge feat because my previous MBEs, I did not finish a single test. And I'm talking like I still had five minutes to spare and just circled something on at least 20 questions in both sessions. You were kind enough to give me your previous scores, and I went back and checked my records. You raised your multi-state score by 28 points. 28 scale points. That is huge, uh, massive. And so you were, you were killing the, the multi-state as well. We talk about this idea of selective intuition for answering questions using photo reading and, and mind maps. We haven't talked about that. But you mind mapped your, your notes, didn't you? Did Absolutely. You yes, I did. Yeah. Can you describe the mind maps and how you use them and then how you incorporated that into answering questions on exam day on the multi-state? So mind mapping for me, I mind mapped with the lectures and then went in and I did, multi well, towards the end I didn't. That's how I started because it was a new process for me. It was something that um, I was trying to figure out how to utilize. So at the beginning I mind mapped with the lectures and then towards the end I would kind of, I photo read my outline, and then I would take the outline from the book and I'd put it in and then I'd kind of start the process on my own before listening to the lecture. And then as I was listening to the lecture, sometimes I'd fill in it, sometimes I wouldn't, sometimes I'd fully listen to the lecture and then go back and, and complete more of my mind map. But it was an ongoing process from the beginning to right up until I took the exam. So every single time I did any kind of essay, any kind of multiple choice I'd update my mind map, make sure it was in there, and then I'd review it. It was probably the same kind of way that I did my photo reading. It was kind of this, okay, well, what, what am I going to be focusing on tomorrow? Okay, so let's review this mind map. Let's do this photo, uh, photo read this outline. And then on the day of, I'll be honest, there was zero thought. 
I went in and I read my, I read the multiple choice and just picked the answer because that's what spoke to me. And I think that's what we talk about with the selective intuition. And I truly believe that mind mapping and photo reading and all of that is the reason I got that score. Yeah, so we're not going to headline this interview. She didn't think on the exam. But the result, of course, is that with selective intuition, you see the answer. You just know what the answer is. And that's what allows you to go faster and, and be able to work. So all of that hard work you did in the beginning and, and throughout your studies then paid dividends on exam day. And again, when you see a 28 point scaled increase, that is an extraordinary jump. And you should be extremely proud of that. That, that is quite, a, quite an accomplishment. When I read, I read every word of the multiple choice. And I already knew what the answer was by the time I was done reading the question. And I just picked it. I didn't have to think about it. It wasn't like, oh, what's the answer? I already knew what the answer was because as I was reading, everything in my head was already taking me to the right place. So yeah. that's, I, that's, that's fabulous. Clear. And that's exactly what selective intuition is supposed to do. So that's terrific. Okay. So now the exam's done. <sighs> You're able to come home. Of course, we have not quite gotten to coronavirus time yet, but it, it's, it's on the periphery. What is it like waiting for results? Oh, it's so stressful. Jackson, I went through, I mean, even getting a 285, I still didn't know. I went through every scenario. Oh, I passed for New Mexico. Oh, I didn't pass. Oh, I passed for everything. You just, you don't know. And, and that's, that's the really tough part about this test and getting through that process. And I just threw myself right back into um, my life, which was a lot harder than I, I thought it was going to be. Um, I thought I was going to have a couple of days off, but with two young children and a family at home, you don't. You just kind of have to get right back into it. And it's always in the back of your mind. It is an anxious period. And thankfully, New Mexico is one of the first to release. <laughs> so. Yeah. That was, that was actually another factor that played into it. And, and so I didn't have to wait as long as a lot of people who were still out there waiting for their results. Yeah, for um, sure. Well, tell me about when New Mexico releases the results. Tell me what that was like and, and what happened. How did you find out your result? Uh, so I was, I was actually working in the garden outside. And I convinced myself that they weren't going to release. Uh, New Mexico is not a state that gives you a, a date because their Supreme Court has to approve this list. I, nobody knows why, but they do. And they don't know when they're going to release it. So, but I, I had told myself that they were going to release it on Friday because they, they would do an email a week before confirming all your address and stuff like that. So I was like, okay, they're going to release on Friday. They didn't release in the morning. And I was like, okay, it's not going to happen today. And all of a sudden I looked down, it was 2.37 PM. I mean, come on. And there was an email on my phone from the New Mexico Board of Law Examiners. And I started flipping out for a second. I was like, okay, it's here, it's here, it's here. My husband's outside with me. My daughter's actually at home. Uh, she's outside on the patio. My son's in daycare because both me and my husband are still working. But I, I clicked on the link and the link was broken. I hit refresh on that for about 10 minutes before I sent them an email. And I was like, okay guys, come on, what's going on? Or did, you, did you release results? Did you not release results? And finally they were like, well, we don't know why it's not updating on our end, but here's the PDF. So I'm like, okay, this is it. It's really happening. And so um, I opened it up and I saw my name. And I screamed and I cried and I hit the ground and I, I, oh, uncontrollable. I scared the bejesus out of my daughter. She went and hid behind my husband because uncontrollable crying for, you know, no explained reason is a little scary for a five-year-old. But we, we called her over and I told her that I had passed my test that I had been studying so hard for. And she just gave me the biggest hug in the whole wide world and asked if we could have celebratory pizza. <laughs> and it was, oh, it was so amazing. Having her there for that moment and knowing what I accomplished and what she saw me accomplish. Oh, it was just so overwhelming. And my husband cried and I cried and it was the most amazing moment. Oh my gosh. That's great. I'm, I want to talk about your daughter for just a minute. So, you're, 
when you were studying for your daughter, I mean, at five years old, uh, this is time that she doesn't get with mommy. What was it like for her, do you think, to see you doing this? How did you explain to her what you were doing? Well, at first, it was just mommy has to study, mommy has to study. And then at one point, she got tired of hearing mommy has to study. And so I sat her down one day and I said, you know, the reason mommy's doing this is is to provide us a better life. And and I did I, I, I did motivate her a little bit with telling her that we go to Disney World more often. <laughs> um, and then so coronavirus she, comes along, yeah. Okay. Yes. So now I have to wait for coronavirus to go away and Disney yeah. World to open back up. Yeah. But I just it I think that she gained a whole new respect for what I was doing. And I know she's only five, but Gosh darn it, she's such a smart five-year-old. She, oh, she keeps me on my toes. Sorry, I'm still crying. But yeah, I, I just kind of explained to her that I was I was following my dreams. I was doing something that I had I had been shooting for for a really long time, and I had given up on my dream for a while, and it was time for, for me to do it, and anything is possible. You know, she still doesn't quite understand it, because I did tell her that once I passed my test, I was going to have more time to spend with her. <laughs> and now that she's home from school and I'm working and she's seeing me working all the time, she actually came up to me. She's like, mommy, I thought since you passed your test, you weren't going to have to work anymore. You were going to get to spend time with me. I was like, oh, yeah. so now I got to find a way to explain that. But Yeah. We'll yeah. Well, this will be the summer that nobody forgets, right? I mean, because um, that was a whole added factor of the anxiety and stress of, I mean, I can't even imagine. I mean, I hope that this inspires people to, to push through and to study for the July bar for those that are going to be taking the July or the February or anything. I mean, you got to still just go for it. And, and I know everything that everyone is going through is so stressful on top of trying to study for this bar exam. I feel for each and every one of you. Uh, but you can do it. It's great uh, encouragement. Your story is going to encourage so many people. I, and I'm so delighted that you would be open enough to share your story with us and, and your success and, and the, the journey. Are there any other pieces of advice you would want to give folks? Anything you want to say to people that are sitting out there who are trying to figure out what to do and here's, you know, coronavirus and bar exams and the chaos and the, the challenge and maybe they haven't passed the bar exam in the past and they're starting to doubt themselves. The primary advice that I would give is to find out your why. Because any goal you have in life, any goal is going to require sacrifice. And if your why isn't strong enough to justify the sacrifice, then you're not going to be successful. It's got to be strong enough. You've got to figure out why it's so important to you and why it matters. And then just do it stick with it and do it. And it's not going to last forever. And just get going. Just start. There is one other thing that I did that we didn't talk about. I mean, at 5 a.m. listening to a lecture is not the easiest thing in the world. I zoned out so many times, but don't ever rewind and go back and listen to it. Just keep going. Keep moving through the syllabus and you are going to get there because you're going to hit that material again you're going to do it again. You're going to see another MBE question. So do not ever let yourself get down. You just have to do it. Follow the syllabus and keep going. I want to ask one other question. People sometimes ask us, you know, why Celebration Bar Review? It's all the tools. It's not just the paraliminals. It's not just the coaching. The Facebook group, the outreach. I have said it to you and emails and everybody. I mean, y'all are, it's y'all are family. Y'all are our CBR family. I will, I hope to stay in touch with these people that I have, that I've been through this process and this journey. And one of the other tools that I think June started doing was the mindset coaching once a week, which is undoubtedly one of the greatest assets. And the coaching calls, the group coaching calls, both of those are completely free. Everything comes with your course. Um, the group coaching calls, you get to sit there and talk with other people who are going through the process to make, to make sure you're not alone because this process is such a lonely process. You are the only one going through it behind closed doors. So having that family and that community was, it was a game changer for me. And I think that's what sets you guys apart.
We are so proud of you and we're so happy for you. And I know that the future is just incredibly bright and unlimited. You got 32 states to pick from, including Texas now. So pretty exciting stuff. And I'm anxious to see where that leads you to and, and the good stuff that you do. But we are just extraordinarily happy for you and your success. And I know that people in the audience are going to be going, wow. <laughs> I, I hope so. I really hope so because I'm, I'm no different than any of you. You all have it in you to do it and, and to get there and to, to, to make your dreams come true. I'm, I'm, I'm not special. It's, uh, you just put in the work and you can make it happen. I promise. With that, we're going to go ahead and say goodbye. Thank you so much. Thanks, everybody, for being with us. We'll be back to you uh, again soon with another story. But take care, everybody, and we'll see you soon. 